Have you ever felt the negative effects of the evil eye? Or do you want to take precautions to protect yourself? In this video, we'll explore the treatment for the evil eye, focusing on the Ruqya method. But before we get into that, let's talk about what you should avoid doing. Some people use amulets, beads, or other objects made of iron to protect themselves. But according to Islamic teachings, these practices are considered superstitions. As Muslims, we are encouraged to trust in Allah alone for protection. Even using amulets with verses from the Quran as a form of protection is seen as superstition. Because it takes the focus away from relying on Allah, it is important to ensure that any treatments we seek are in line with Islamic teachings and don't involve any forbidden practices. The Prophet ﷺ taught us about the practice of Ruqya and reciting it provides protection against the evil eye. He وسلم, said, There is no Ruqya except in the case of the evil eye and fever. Sunan at tirmidhi and Sunan Abu Dawood. So now, let's discuss the Ruqya treatment. One when you know who caused it and when you don't. When you know who caused the evil eye and you've been affected. If you know who caused the evil eye, it's recommended to approach that person and ask them to perform the wudu. Then, collect the water they use to wash themselves and cleanse yourself with it. This method is based on the tradition of Sahil ibn Hanif, where using the same water as the person who caused the evil eye has proven to be the most effective treatment. With the will of Allah, Please note, if someone asks you to wash yourself because they believe you've given them the evil eye, it's important to take their request seriously. You are obliged to do so. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, reported that the Prophet peace be upon him said, the evil eye is real, and if anything were to overtake the divine decree, it would be the evil eye. When you are asked to wash yourself due to the influence of the evil eye, then wash yourself. Tirmidhi, Ahmed, Muslim, and authenticated by Al Albani in Silsila Sahiha, number 1251. Now let's discuss the specific steps for this treatment. First, the person who caused the evil eye dips their hand in a bowl of water and rinses their mouth with the water. Second, they then wash their face using the same water from the bowl. Next, they place their left hand into the bowl and wash their right hand. After that, they put their right hand into the bowl and wash their left hand. They repeat the process by placing their left hand into the bowl and washing their right elbow. Then, they put their right hand into the bowl and wash their left elbow. They continue by putting their left hand into the bowl and washing their right foot. Subsequently, they use their right hand to wash their left foot. They proceed to put their left hand into the bowl and wash their right knee. And then, use their right hand to wash their left knee. Following this, the inside of the undergarment, izar, is washed in the bowl. To clarify, when washing the undergarment, focus on the area above the genitals, around the waist, and avoid direct contact with the private parts. And finally, they pour the water from behind the head of the person affected by the evil eye, all at once. Quote from Al Bayhaqi in Sunan, Part 9, page 253. When you've been affected by the evil eye and you don't know who caused it. But what if you don't know who caused the evil eye? This is a common situation. However, there is a treatment available in such cases as well. This treatment involves reciting verses from the Quran over water using permissible oils and herbs. You are going to recite the following ayat, repeating each one three times. It's important to recite these ayat over the water you use for washing and the oils you apply. Surah Al-Fatiha Surah Al-Baqarah Ayat 1-5 Surah Al-Baqarah Ayat 109 Ayat Al-Kursi Surah Al-Baqarah Ayat 255 Surah Al-Baqarah Ayat 285 to 286. Surah at Tawbah, Ayat 14 to 15. Surah Yunus, Ayat 57. Surah Yusuf, Ayat 67. 
Surah An-Nahl, Ayat 68 to 69. Surah Al-Isra, Ayah 82. Surah Al-Shu'ara, Ayah 80. Surah Fusilat, Ayah 44. Surah Al-Mulk, Ayat 1 to 4. Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 54. Surah Taha, Ayah 131. Surah Al-Kahf, Ayah 39. Surah Al-Qalam, Ayat 51 to 52. Surah Al-Ikhlas, Surah Al-Falaq, and Surah Al-Nas. In addition to reciting the ayat, you should also use the following supplications. These supplications, known as adayya, serve as a form of ruqya and provide protection against the influence of the shaitan, venomous creatures, and the evil eye. Here are the four supplications. The first dua is, أعوذ بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق. I seek refuge in the perfect words of Allah from the evil eye of what he has created. The second dua is, أعيدكما بكلمات الله التامات من كل شيطان وهامة ومن كل عين لامة. I seek refuge for both of you in the perfect words of Allah from every devil and poisonous reptile and from every evil eye. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, himself sought refuge with Allah for his grandchildren Al Hassan and Al Hussein and recited the dua Sahih al Bukhari, Sunan al Tirmidhi, Sunan Abu Dawood. The third dua is Bismillah arqiq, min kulli shay'in yu'dhik, min sharri kulli nafsin aw aynin hasid, Allahu yashfik, Bismillah arqiq. In the name of Allah, I seek refuge for you from every evil thing that may harm you, from the harm of every soul or envious eye. May Allah protect you. In the name of Allah, I seek refuge for you. The companion Abu Sa'id narrated that the angel Gabriel was with the Prophet ﷺ and asked him if he was feeling ill. When the Prophet peace be upon him confirmed it, Gabriel performed ruqya for the Prophet peace be upon him and recited this dua, Sahih Muslim. The fourth dua is, Allahumma rabban nas, adhi bil ba'as, wa shfi, anta shafi la shifa'a illa shifa'uk, shifa'an la yugadiru saqaman. O Allah, Lord of mankind, remove the affliction and cure. You are the only one who cures. There is no cure except through you, a cure that leaves no illness. If you fear the evil eye, but have not been directly affected, you can take preventive measures. This falls under the concept of tawakkul, which means placing trust in Allah while also utilizing permissible means. The scholars of Ahlu Sunnah have provided valuable insights into what to do when you fear the influence of the evil eye on yourself, your possessions, or your children. It is essential to take these measures seriously and apply them. One highly recommended measure is to frequently recite phrases such as MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, and Allahumma barik fih. It is advisable to say these phrases aloud, ensuring that the person you suspect may be casting the evil eye can hear them. According to the advice of Shaykh Atiyah Muhammad Salim Rahimahullah, if you fear that you or your belongings may be affected by the evil eye, you should say, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, in a clear and audible voice, making sure the person you suspect of casting the evil eye can hear it. Al-Ayn wa ruqya wa istisfa'u min al-Qur'an wa sunnah Page 45 Another effective measure is to recite the takbir by saying Allahu Akbar three times. This recitation serves as a means of protection in accordance with the principles of the Sharia against the influence of evil spirits, whether they are among humans, jinn, or the fire, which is our enemy. As stated by Ibn Taymiyyah radiallahu anhu, Majmu'u Fatawa 24-229. Shaykh Muhammad al-Amin al-Shalqiti rahimahullah also emphasizes the power of reciting the takbir three times when fearing the effects of the evil eye. By doing so, Allah will repel the harm caused by the evil eye. All praise be to Allah for his blessings and protection. Adwa al-Bayan, 
9650-651. We hope that the information and preventive measures shared in this video will assist you in protecting yourself and your loved ones from the effects of the evil eye. If you're interested in learning more about the symptoms associated with the evil eye and how to identify them, we invite you to watch our next video. Don't forget to click on the link to stay updated and enable notifications so you won't miss out on our upcoming content.